training 2016 from the Cactus League. And welcome everybody to Salt River Fields at Talking Stick. The Rockies will wrap up the 2016 spring training slate against their good friends from uh, Peoria, Arizona, the Seattle Mariners. And welcome officially upstairs with Mike Blowers uh, from Seattle side of things and uh, Jeff Houston, I'm Drew Goodman. You've been down here all spring training. Yep. It is, it's that time of year where guys are, are itching to, to get going for real. It's a little scary, though, still for a couple of guys because both rosters are not fully set, won't be till after the ball game. Yeah, and, and that's always something that's concerning for those guys, and, and we really don't know. For the Mariners right now, you're talking about the backup catcher position, Clevenger or Brantley. Um, so I think they're probably going to wait. The rosters have to be set by tomorrow. The team is flying out of town right after this game. But other than that, everything else is set on this club. And, Jeff, from the Rockies' standpoint, the roster's not fully set, and I think this goes for both teams, all 30 teams in baseball. Stay healthy, stay healthy, stay healthy today. Well, and you saw it last night where the Arizona Diamondbacks, A.J. Pollock, his loss has to have surgery. So both clubs today, they're going, okay, we want to make sure we get our regulars. They're one at bat. Get them out of there because everybody wants to be ready to go on Monday. There you go. Let's take a look once again at Seattle's lineup, and they will play more or less their A lineup with the you'll see on Monday against the Texas Rangers in Arlington. Nori Aoki will lead things off. Kyle Seeger, we saw him last night bang out a couple of hits. Tremendous offensive player. Robinson Cano, he's had a gorgeous spring. He'll bat in the third hole, a spot. Then uh, Nelson Cruz, Adam Lind, Franklin Gutierrez hit a lot of long balls this spring as well. Cattell Marte, Chris Iannetta, the one-time Rocky, and Angel will bat eighth. And Leonis Martin, the former Ranger, in his first uh, tour of duty in Seattle. And Jordan Lyles, he was not officially announced, but we learned uh, earlier from Walt that uh, Jordan was told this morning he will start the home opener against the San Diego Padres on Friday back at Coors Field. So. Well, yeah, and a chance for him today to go out and have that final tune-up, and he needs to have a good game. Well, we saw the numbers. I'm not concerned about the 0-3 record, but the 788 ERA is a little high. Last outing didn't pitch real well. It uh, hasn't gotten back to, to getting those ground ball outs. And for a guy that has been around a little bit, Jordan's still a very young guy, but how concerning, Mike, would it be if, if you are somewhat of a veteran but you didn't have a strong spring? I think that it's always concerning uh, because then you're leaving everything to chance and you're not feeling good about going into the season if you're fortunate enough to still make the ball club. So I, I think that for those, a lot of the guys, more than anything, it's those last week to 10 days excluding this last game or two because the guys are thinking forward but I, I think it's important I just think you just kind of what Jess was talking about you want to feel better about yourself as you start the season here's the Rockies defensively this afternoon at least for several innings it will be the guys you'll see Monday night across the way at Chase Field Gerardo Park Charlie Blackman Carlos Gonzalez what should be an outstanding defensive outfield Nolan Arenado at third Trevor Story the rookie at shortstop DJ LeMahieu Mark Reynolds is getting the start at first base this afternoon. Nick Hunley is behind the plate. DH will be Ben Paulson, and that'll be a platoon at first base between Paulson and Mark Reynolds. First pitch is in there, strike one to Kyle Seeger. I love watching this guy hit, man. He's, he's a very good player. You can see he's having an outstanding spring, 321 average, a couple of home runs for Kyle. Rocky shipped against Seeger, and the breaking ball misses one ball and one strike. I, I walked into the ballpark last night with Seeger and the former Rocky Seth Smith and I, I was going to kid Kyle and say, dude, what happened? Your little brother got all the height, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he, he would laugh about it, I can tell you that. How's the third How's the third brother doing? He will be in double A this year. He'll, he's in double A. He'll okay. be in double A, yep. They remind me of the Drew family. I mean, they were all number one picks, remember? Yeah. Right. J.D., Steven, and Tim Drew. Tim Drew's like the fifth Beatle. Who's the guy? Who's the other? Who's the other? <laughs> with all due respect to Tim. He, he actually, I think he finished up with the Rockies. From Hahira, Georgia. Well, they cranked out a few players there. Yeah, that, you know, didn't Buster Posey's from that part of the world also. Lyles inside and tight on Seeger, three and two. <laughs> well, if you weren't awake before, you are now. <laughs> You're invested in the game. Yeah, last game too, and you take a look at the pitch to Kyle, does the right thing and turns away from it. Time out, time out. 
was watching Seeger last night because I was you, you guys were broadcasting the game and I was sitting down low and he really stays on his backside. And you talk about that, but he he does. He has fast hands and lets the ball travel and that one travels inside. So a one out walk to Seeger and that'll bring up Robbie Cano. So la this, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, Mike, just the last day I saw Robbie kind of gave a, you know, a salute over to Walt Weiss and yeah. his crew. It's, it's a bummer for those guys. The last day they get sunshine. They got to they got to <laughs> stay in the dugout from now on, right? Yeah, that is true. You're right. A couple of mornings ago that we were asking Scott Service, the first time he's ever managed anywhere, and they were asking him about that, and he's pretty excited to get things going on Monday. See, you know, they're, they're misses, Huey, with, with intent, and then they're just bad misses. And that that's, a, you know, a first pitch, that, that's a bad miss. It, it is, and that's kind of been the, the, the theme of the spring for Jordan, that he's just missing up in the zone way too much. And that's why I mentioned a moment ago that I think it's, a, it's an important start for him to, to feel good, have some positive to go out of this spring training because you know then you're going to sit for three or four days before you open up next Friday at home. 2-0 against Cano, who's hit seven home runs this spring and a 364 average coming off double hernia surgery in the offseason. And this does not have the bunch in spring training. This doesn't have the bunch in the regular season. He had three jacks against the Cubs the other day. Yeah, that one to right field, you're going to see one to left field and one to center field. He, he's been a hot hitter this spring. The one thing that I've noticed from Robbie as he's finally healthy this spring and one of the things he had a tough time with last year was turning on the inside fastball that has not been a problem this spring and he's hitting 364 with seven home runs but he's pulled the ball with authority all spring and a lot of people are excited about that he's also moving much better out at second base your core is just involved in so much of athletic moves of baseball and and not to have that you know in your mind you're you're, you're going to the plate not fully confident Here's the 3 1 to Cano. And this ball to DJ. There's one, and they'll turn it into a double play. Nice play by LeMayhew, and that'll get the Rockies off the field. 4 6 3. And we'll see the Rockies A lineup when we come back. Final spring training game of 2016. He'll lead things off naturally. Good solid spring. He's hit five home runs. In fact, the rest of the lineup, Trevor Story. Looks like he's settled into that two spot in Walt Weiss's lineup. The cargo, Arenado, who's had just a ridiculous spring. Gerardo Parra. Mark Reynolds, Nick Huntley, Ben Paulson, and DJ LeMay, who can hit virtually anywhere in a lineup. Nathan Carnes is on the hill for Seattle. It's been a good spring for him, and uh, he's been rewarded. 
He's made the ball club right before his last outing. He was told that he had made the club. He and James Paxton were battling for that fifth starter spot, and they finally made up their, their mind on what the, which direction they wanted to go to. Paxton was sent down to AAA. Um, and Nathan, I thought it was his best outing. He went six innings, gave up two earned runs in his last outing. Pretty good fastball. He'll be in the low 90s with his fastball. Good breaking ball and a changeup. One and one on Blackman, who's got five home runs this spring. And he's also walked ten times. Here's the Mariners with the gloves. Noriyoki is going to be in left field. Leonis Martin should sure up that outfield quite a bit playing center. Nelson Cruz is in right. And then Seeger, Marte, Cano, and Lynn left to right in the infield. And veteran backstop Chris Iannetta. New general manager Jerry DePoto, of course, long ties to the Rockies, the Angels. Watched Ionetta play every day, so not a surprise that he went out and got him. And then hey, you think back to his Arizona uh, days. You know, Wade Miley started last night, and, and I spent some time with Jerry. He admires how quickly he works and takes the baseball. And he he feels like your park is going to be so much better suited to Wade Miley than when he was pitching down at Arizona. The ball flies there. A lot right. of I don't want to call them cheap home runs, but you know, balls in the air, you got to really hit them to get them out of your place. In, in between pitches last year, he was at 17 and a half seconds. The only one faster than him was Mark Burley. So we expect him to be number one this year in that category. Right. And I can tell you, you talk to the fielders, <laughs> they love it. I think at Safeco Field, it will help him uh, tremendously. One, he has a good defense. You mentioned Martin in center field. That'll make a big difference for them because you have to cover a lot of ground. And he, is, he has shown that he's capable of doing that. So I, I think that that is right. All the pitchers will enjoy pitching at Safeco. 1-1 one, one to Story, and Hello. it's uh, one and two. One of the areas, Huey, that Story has really improved, and it's okay. been demonstrated this spring, is the two-strike approach and his ability to go the other way. And with some power, too, because we've yeah. seen home runs go to right center and to right field. And, and when you have confidence and you're not afraid to get to two strikes, you know what the numbers are like, but he, you're going to have to get there sometimes. I mean, it happens. You're, you have a number of bats throughout the course of a season where you have two strikes. If you learn to just shorten up, put the ball in play, good things are going to happen. Two and two on Trevor, 353 average, six home runs. And he can hit him out, as Jeff was mentioning, from foul pole to foul pole. We were chatting the other day. And the weight room would come to a stop when he was lifting, especially when he was deadlifting. Oh yeah, you got to tell the number too. This is this is remarkable. Um, he deadlifted this this winter 525. Now you're big man, Mike. 525. And if he went and did that in the uh, Seahawks locker room, swung it out and missed, or the Denver Bronco locker room. They would do it in the locker room, but you know, in their weight room. People would be impressed. Right. I mean, that is that is NFL strong. And he, you can tell that he's a strong kid, but he doesn't look that he should be capable of that. No, I mean, he's 212 pounds. And he's still young. I mean, I don't think all the man strength's kicked <laughs> in just yet, right? Well, <laughs> go up from 500 pounds on a deadlift? Pretty close. So. Wow. Shift is on for cargo. Two outs, nobody on. Cargo in the clubhouse today. Came over. He said, Nobody's told me anything. Have I made the team? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, we, we'll go ahead and announce it. Yes, you have. On the outside corner for a strike, one and one. Two, three, beginning for Nathan Carnes. No scores. We go to the second on a gorgeous Scottsdale afternoon.
<laughs> He's just contemplating right now. So let's do it at the ballpark. <laughs> He's only going to eat half the bun, evidently. So big Nelson Cruz steps in. 40 plus home runs last year for Cruz. It seemed like the ballpark yeah, in yeah, Seattle like affected Cruz. <laughs> Not many of them well. Not where he hits them. Here's the 0 1. And good location with that slider 0 and 2. That's a good sequence. Well, it all started with strike one. Makes a difference. Get ahead, then you can go to the sliders. But the location of the last slider just off balance. Nelson just kind of waved at that pitch. Yeah, that's one. Mike, you go back to the dugout and say, what, what exactly was my approach there? Well, I, I think. And Jeff and I both have been there. This is one of those days where you have to wonder where their concentration maybe is. It's always the fastest game of the year, getaway day, the end of spring training. 215 last night. That game, that game moved along, and then it ended up in a 1-1 tie. Adam Lind with three on the right side, and he takes a Ooh. strike. Got this AOS figured out yet? No. New? No, I mean, Houston obviously is, has emerged, real athletic team, had a terrific season. Texas won 88 games last year. They're getting you Darvish back, it looks like at some point in May, yep. to go along with a full season for Cole Hamels. And, and again, that's, you can't make a better move than going to get you Darvish and assume, you know, it may take some time. They're going to be interesting. You guys will be interesting. The Angels, it's a, it's a tough division. I think you look at Houston, and, and they're, they're very young, really athletic. Can they repeat what they were able to do last year, I think, is one of the questions. And the Rangers, you mentioned they're starting pitching, getting healthy. Uh, they're the team last year that surprised me a little bit because their starting rotation was hurt for the most part. They did get Hamels in the second half, but... They still ended up running down Houston and getting past them when it looked like Houston was going to win the thing. So I don't think you can count them out. 2-2 two, two, misses 3-2. And, and the Rangers also did it with the first-year manager. Yeah. They're going in there. Well, hopefully the, that'll work for I, the Mariners I know, exactly. this year. Exactly. And that's two walks now, one each inning. So Lind with one out, jogs down to first. Here's the Hale West from a year ago. And as Mike pointed out, it looked like it was going to be the Astros division, but the Rangers came on so strong late, they ended up winning it by a couple of games. The Angels, let's not forget, won 85 games a year ago. And there's the Mariners. And been 14 years now, right? 14 years yep. since the Mariners have been in the postseason. They're trying to end that drought naturally this season. Franklin Gutierrez. Ooh. How much time will he get in the outfield? I think that he will play against all left-handers as long as he is able to go. So if he's healthy and he feels well, he'd, he'd been sick for a number of years. He was able to come back last year. And in a limited number of at-bats, right around 170, 80 at-bats, he hit 15 home runs. But the, right now it looks like he's going to platoon with Seth Smith in right field. Seth would be in the lineup today, has a groin pull, so they're just being careful with him. But they want Franklin in there against the lefties as much as possible. As we all know, Seth, Seth will be one of those guys, especially against righties. He'll roll out of bed when he's 60, he'll be able to hit. Yeah, and had a great spring, hit well over 500 for the spring. One and two on Gutierrez. And he drives center field, sinking line, and Blackman handles it to gone. 
A limited number of tickets remain to join in the fun and excitement of Mariners opening night next Friday. Usher in the 2016 season by welcoming home Felix, Robbie, and your favorite Mariners. All fans receive a free magnetic schedule courtesy of Safeco Insurance. Visit Mariners.com for more information. Junior's going to throw out the first pitch, right? He is. Yeah, we're all excited about that. He was in spring training. Well, I guess it was a week ago, maybe 10 days. It's good to see him and Down here. Let's go. Come on. see if he can throw a strike. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I think he probably can. I think he'll be fine. Tell Marte at the plate. He had a good spring. 358 average. It'll be interesting when you look at the Mariners lineup. You have Seeger hitting second today and Marte is hitting seventh and Scott Service said before the game today that against right handers Seeger will hit second against left handers Marte will move up and hit second. A lot of managers handle that two spot. In this era of baseball differently. It, it, in some managers eyes the two spot. It's it's the new three spot. Right. Hey, finish him out. And. You know the Rockies will be a little different. They're going to have a young player in there, but with Cargo behind Trevor Story and Nolan behind Cargo, they're hoping to get that kid some fastballs. Well, it used to be that two spot was a guy that a move, just going to move up guy. I'm going to drop down, sacrifice. I think back a long time ago in the early '90s with Pittsburgh and Jay Bell. I think one year he had 35 something like that sacrifice bunts out of the two spot. Or are you going to hit and run because he's a punch and Judy, maybe hit it the other way. Now these guys have so much power that you don't want to give up that out. Right. 2-2. Two, two. To your point, Drew, early in spring training, Robbie looked great, and a lot of people were asking, well, he's your best hitter. Would you hit him second? And Scott says, I know all the numbers. I know what everybody thinks. But for me, as a former player, he's a number three guy. Mm -hmm. And I think I think Jeff you can appreciate that. Yeah. I mean that's where you put your best hit. Tough chance for DJ and he'll knock it down but it'll be an infield hit for Marte. And with it being a 3 2 pitch with two outs he had no opportunity to get the force with Lynn moving. And you're not going to get Marte hitting from the left side. We saw it last night's game how fast he is and that's a part of his strength is hit the ball on the ground and when DJ has to slide even with his strong arm he's probably not going to get Marte at first base. So here's Chris Ionetta. Chris carved himself out a very nice big league career. He really has. Uh, you know, he got traded from Colorado over to Anaheim for Josh Rutledge and then spent two or three years there. And now here he's closing in on 10 years of Major League Service time. Always oh, been known as a guy that can catch and throw, call the good game, blocks, all the intangibles that you need out of a catcher. Until last year, Jeff, you'd been a high on base percentage guy, too. You look at catchers throughout the game. He was always amongst the leaders in there. So the Mariners are hoping he can get back to that. Struggled last year with Anaheim. Product of North Carolina. Swung on a miss. So Lyles strikes out Ionetta to end the inning. Couple left on a walk and a base hit for Seattle. Middle of two, no score.
Cup. I believe you've heard of him. He'll be leading things off. And, and another guy perhaps you've heard of, Ryan Spilborgs, is a dugout level, Spilly. Never heard of Nolan Arenado, and I know from what I heard of, I think he's a good player. Well, mentioning third baseman right now in this day and age where you talk about the Chris Bryants, the Manny Machados, Josh Donaldson's, right now truly is the age of the third baseman. Nolan Arenado and Kyle Seeger, two of the best, I can argue, the best in baseball. If you look at them, since 2009, both drafted in the same year, in the three last years that they've played, those numbers are remarkably similar. Talk to Nolan about Kyle a little bit. They love watching each other play. It's one of these things as Nolan gets another base hit, that when you start looking at the third baseman in game, I would argue, Mike and Huey, that right now, third base is the strongest position in all of Major League Baseball. It's amazing how that it goes that way because for a while their clubs were really struggling, but now, especially when you look at these two guys for Kyle, I know that he felt really good about his gold glove because he's in a league with Adrian Beltre, who is, in my opinion, in the American League is the best, and I think Kyle would agree with that. But, um, yeah, there are a lot of really good third basemen, and it seems in baseball it goes in cycles like that. You think back, you know, for a while it was the, the shortstops were the were mm -hmm. the prime position. Then you had some first basemen. But to play a premium position and play the defense along with it, I think that's what makes this group of players so unique is they can do it both offensively and defensively. Well, and it, it is fun to watch. It is fun. Mike, Mike, you mentioned that Adrian Beltre is the best third baseman in baseball, and Nolan Arenado would totally agree with you. That is his hero. That is his idol. And yeah. we've seen him take multiple plays away from Adrian Beltre, base hits. What we've noticed now is that Nolan's starting to emulate some of the things that Adrian Beltre has done. So I'm curious to you guys, have you ever emulated your favorite player? I think everybody, yeah. every player has done that. Yeah. I, I At mean, the major league level, you're watching well, major leaguer and then change your swing or change some of the things that you do? Maybe. Well, when I was struggling, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I would try anything. Um, but there are a lot of players. I mean, for me, obviously, I had the opportunity to play a number of years with Ken Griffey Jr. I was never going to have that swing, so why even bother? But I would watch Edgar Martinez every day and, and just try to do little things that maybe he would do or talk to him about it and try to incorporate it into my game and the things that I was capable of doing. I'm, now I'm not going to be Edgar and go out and win a couple of batting titles, but the, there were things that he would do that, yeah, I absolutely. I think what you constantly evolve and adjust as you move along. And you'll try things in batting practice. You'll try things in infield when you're taking ground balls, and maybe you'll try to emulate them then, and it works. So then it be, just becomes part of you subconsciously. You don't realize you're doing it, and then pretty soon you go, well, yeah, well, I guess I do kind of throw like so-and-so. One last question for you guys, just because I enjoyed hearing you guys talk about infield play. What separates Kyle and Nolan as far as their hands and footwork? That, that's a great question. I, I can tell you on Kyle's side of things, watching him when he first came up as a second baseman and moving to third, and there were some people that were questioning whether he was going to have the arm strength to be over there or not. That is not a problem for him. But the amount of work that he has put into it, and we mentioned Adrian Beltre, when Beltre was with the Mariners, he worked on his defense all the time. And for Kyle, he, he told me that the biggest difference for him moving to third was not to sit back on the ball. As soon as the ball hit, I want to be aggressive and go to it. He said, I want to be an aggressive defensive player. And if you watch him, a lot of times coming in on the ball and that in-between hop, he absolutely smothers it and makes it look easy. I've been out there. That second hop has all that top spin on it, and it will eat you up over a third. But Kyle is to the point now where he makes it look really easy. And for me, that's a separator along with the accuracy of his arm. He's always on the money. I mean, you have to have the good throws. For me, for Nolan, it's the anticipation when the ball's hit. The second thing for, for me is how many plays he can make. And it doesn't matter whether it's a bare hand, it's a backhand towards the line, if it's a spin move in the hole, that he, he can make that play where some guys will just eat it. They, they won't even attempt the throw, and he gets it off and gets the guy, and, and it leaves you shaking your head like, wow, he just did it again. That's why there's a big difference between speed and quickness, and, and sometimes we align both together. Nolan, obviously, is not a fast runner. But first step quickness, he's got it. And the other thing, Huey, and, and, and having been an infielder as good as you were, his hands are extraordinary. Yeah, and that's something you can't teach. Right. I mean, he was just blessed with great hands. But I'm sure like Kyle does it, they, they put in hours and hours of practice taking ground balls. And it's not just by happenstance that they make the plays. 
The thing that, that I also marvel at with Kyle, and, and this is the reason why, for me, I think it's important to play other sports, do other things, and play other different positions. Great point. Because if you watch Kyle as a second baseman now at third on that double play ball, he gets rid of it as quickly as anybody I've ever seen. And I think it's because he spent so many years turning to, turning to, turning to. And now when he gets that ground ball, it's a perfect feed on its way to Cano, and Robbie can do whatever he wants to at second to turn it. One, two, with two on. And this is in the air to center field. Reynolds retired. Tagging up is Arenado, and he's going to move up 90 feet. And you know, it may be the final spring training game. That, that's a little thing that the Rockies have to do, even, even for an average or perhaps below average runner. It doesn't matter how fast you are. Sometimes you have to have the anticipation. The other thing I like is the way he turned his body to the outfield and used his right foot to plant off the back so he had the play in front of him. He's not looking over his shoulder to see when he has to get that jump. But it helps Nick Huntley at the plate. He's saying, thank you. I just have to get the ball into the outfield now, and I've got a sacrifice fly. we got to run on the board at minimum. And in particular, this is what the Rockies have to do on the road. On the road. I mean, it, there's almost a quarter century now of data. The Rockies will hit it home. Mike, you know that. They, they, yep. They're playing an extraordinary offensive park. They play at altitude. We, we've been over that ad nauseum. And on the road, for a myriad of reasons, the Rockies, you know, the change in climate, the ball movement, the Rockies don't hit. So you have to find a way to manufacture and, and, and win some 3-2 ball games, something they've not been adept at doing in the past on the road. Well, and I think that that is something that it's critical. You have to be able to play in your home ballpark, but you have to make some adjustments on the road, too. For the Mariners, it's been the other way. They've had to make adjustments to play in their ballpark for the opposite reason that you just talked yeah. about with Coors Field. And that's one of the reasons why Jerry DePoto, he wanted guys that are more on-base percentage guys, get more athletic so they could run, so they could manufacture more runs. I mean, if you think about Nelson Cruz, 44 home runs last year, and he had 93 RBIs. That's a lot of solo home runs. That's right. He needs to get people on base ahead of him, and well, that's the reason why they made the adjustments. Well, how about this? And I know you're aware of this, Mike. The last 10 years, the on-base percentage for the Seattle Mariners is right at 300, the worst in Major League Baseball for a decade. And Nick's going to get it done with the... Fly ball to right field. Arenado will jog home. And as you said, Huey, that, that 90 feet huge, and the Rockies take a, a one nothing lead. And Nick Hunley, when he gets back to that dugout, he's going to give Mark Reynolds a high five, too, for making sure that that guy got over there to allow him just to hit the fly ball to right field. And, and we talk about manufacturing runs, and especially for the Rockies in the National League West, when you have you know, three ballparks and you're playing at night, you got San Diego, you have L.A., and you have San Francisco. They've got good pitching staffs usually, but those ballparks aren't conducive to scoring seven, eight, nine runs. So it's going to be a low-scoring affair. Two outs, Ben Paulson at the plate. He threw out a couple of knocks last night. And he golfs this ball to deep left field. It is off the base of the wall. And around third coming home is Gerardo Parr. Here's the throw. Not going to get him. A two out of run scoring double to the opposite field for Paulson. And it's two to nothing, Colorado. Talk about going down and getting it here. Well, and Ben can do that. He's kind of got a little loop in his swing, but in a good way, because he can drive the ball to left center field. And he's starting to come on, had a couple hits last night, and Arago Parra trucking it home from first base. But I got my running in for today. I don't need to do any extra. I gave him a lot of credit for that double, because looking at the replay, I thought that was a pretty good pitch from Nate Carnes. Yeah. And I think Mel Stottlemyre, the new pitching coach, will let him know that. You know, it's it's funny because so often, and we do this from time to time as announcers, that anything that gets hit hard, we say, oh, that's a mistake. And the third ball, moving to third, is Ben Paulson. Sometimes the hitter puts a good swing on what is a good pitch. That happens quite a bit. We always, oh, it was a mistake. Ball got hit out of the ballpark. Mistake. Ball got hit off the wall. Mistake. Maybe not. You're not going to survive here unless you can hit good pitches. 
that's going to happen. But you're right, I think that, that's what people generally think. But if you think about Nate right there, what is he trying to do? I want to throw one at the knees on the outside corner, maybe have some run on it. And that's exactly what he was able to do. And Ben just stayed on it. He stayed on it. Yeah. The, the old line, well, they practice too. Yes. Right. DJ LeMay, who does a lot of practicing, and he's had a lot of success. Strong spring for LeMayhew. What a different spring for, for DJ coming in, had a two-year contract, which helps. Sure. <laughs> you know that, okay, I'm the guy now. It, it, but he's earned that right to have that contract he, and be the guy. Yeah, he has absolutely earned it. Mike, you would appreciate this, and, you know, watching DJ every day. He just, he works hard, doesn't say a whole lot, but you know he's invested in every pitch, every play, and there's nothing that he leaves to chance. Just one of those type of players. Yeah, and you have to have those guys on your team. Sometimes you have to have guys that just lead by example, and it sounds like that's what he is. This ball down the right field line, if it's fair, it's a problem, but it uh, is foul. The thing that's valuable for DJ is he can hit leadoff, he can hit two. This year he might be hitting eighth a lot. He handles that position well in the, in the National League. When you know when I need to swing, when I, they're trying to pitch around me to get to the pitcher. Just the flexibility in a lineup DJ provides. He's a tough-minded guy who stays with his approach. And there have been guys who whispered in his ear, say, man, you're 6'4", 215 pounds. you got to hit the ball over the wall. He has stayed true to who he is on the corner, a strike. So Carnes punches out LeMahieu to end the inning, but the Rockies get a couple of runs on a couple of hits. And this one's a big blow. A one score double for Ben Paulson. 2-0 Rockies as we go to the third. Mike Blowers from the Seattle Mariners, Jeff Houston from the Rockies, Ryan Spielborgs from Mars. I'm Drew Goodman. <laughs> what? Nothing. I just I enjoyed that. Shout out to Spilly. I just wanted to uh, accurately represent where everybody <laughs> was from. <laughs> oh, Spilly's not getting too hot down there in the dugout. He's obviously he's not paying much attention. You mean not paying attention? I mean, I got. Yeah, no response. Crickets on that. Uh, well, Brandon Barnes was talking to me. I was asking where he got his haircut. Everybody's gotten really nice haircuts today, and he well, said, that, "Well, that's important for opening day." <laughs> that's what he said. He was like, "You know what? Uh, yeah, I am working hard. Look at this." 
<laughs> That's about the look we expect. Uh, yeah. Leonis uh -oh. Martin, he hits this a ways to right, and Cargo will make the catch in the middle of the track. One out, and the top of the order, represented by Noria Oki, will come up for Seattle. Barnes is one of those guys who gets a haircut like every third day. Yeah, I mean, just just shaves it and he's good to go. I'm getting to that spot. I know. I was noticing. Yeah. Beautiful thing, man. Threw the comb brush out like uh, six years ago. Two outs. Well, Rockies fans, be at Coors Field for the Rockies 2016 home opener weekend against the San Diego Padres. That's April 8th through the 10th, next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Rodo will be hopping for sure. And it's guaranteed to be in the mid-70s. All the bad weather of late back home. It'll all move out, home opener. We know we'll get uh, terrific weather. Kyle Seeger at the plate. Kyle walked his first time up. Outside ball one. Seeger 360 or 321 average. Couple home runs this spring. Change up misses 2 0. Of a shift on for Seeger. Don't see DJ back on the grass like he he does sometimes. Kyle will see that a lot this year. I wonder how many guys will now that it, it's so prevalent in the game. How many guys will reach out, throw it, throw down a bunt, do something to counteract the shift, or do you? Especially if you're now if you're slug right like Cargo. For the most part, you can say, all right, you can shift all you want. Nolan's feels the same way. I'm, I'm going to stay with my approach. But will some guys start to alter things occasionally? Kyle started doing it last year. He would drop down a bunt, or he would hit the ball the other way. Uh, I, I think for him, it's and, and probably a lot of hitters that are like him, you have to pick your spots. Because he's also in the lineup to hit the ball over the fence and drive in runs. But he wants to hit for a higher average. It's something that I talked to him about this spring. And I think that he's going to go that way. Seth Smith, who's not in the lineup today, I asked him, do you pay attention to the shift? Because they shift on him all the time, too. And he told me, when I'm swinging the bat well, I don't worry about it at all. If I don't feel particularly good, then I will take a shot over there. Yeah. Usually when you do that, it'll kind of get you back in the right frame of mind. If, you, if you're thinking about just taking the ball the other way or maybe dropping down a bunt. Right. Now you get that knock and you feel better about yourself when the next time you step in the box. Here's the 1 0 to Cano. Robbie bounced into a 4 6 3 double play his first time up. Third year of a 10 year deal for Cano with Seattle after so many terrific seasons in the Bronx. He used to do this drill with Kevin Long, who was the Yankees hitting instructor, and now is the Mets hitting instructor, where they would do front toss, and he would put a screen. There was a screen, obviously, in front of the guys. Kevin Long was doing the front toss, but there, there would be a screen at the plate, cutting the plate in half. So you're basically taking your, your bat from your belly button and extending it to the screen, and he would hit ball after ball into the right field seats at Yankee Stadium on a little front toss drill and, and the drill obviously is to keep your hands inside right. you can't extend otherwise you're going to if you get disconnected you're going to hit the screen he has such a beautiful swing it's a long run for Arenado Huntley now in the neighborhood and Nick with self-preservation on his mind <laughs> And Nolan says, good job. You didn't go <laughs> yeah. flying over the, the fence. You didn't go with your head flipping over the fence into the dugout. You caught yourself. You know, Nolan's coming into the picture, but he was playing over in the shift, so he's playing at the shortstop position. 
It was a good job, Nick. Don't get hurt. Cano in the off season, I still believe I asked him last year when we were up at your place. He still works out with his dad and talks talks to his dad. I mean, almost on a daily basis. He he is all about routine. You were talking about that drill. We saw him doing that all the time last year at Safeco Field, coming out early. Isn't it extraordinary it, though? It is. The, no, the, it the is. power that he generates. Mm -hmm. And he and he would bring some of the other guys out with him from time to time. And it is. It's just to get your hands back inside. And, but to, to, on a little toss, like you're saying, to generate that kind of bat speed to hit it over the fence is, is a whole nother thing. This ball's well struck left center field. Blackman is going to have to field it off the base of the wall. Seeger around third, and he'll score the first Mariners run. Now Cano's locked in. He's ready to go for real. Two to one. Well, I'll be talking about Cano pulling the ball, but you can see this ball running off the outside corner. Pretty good, pretty good pitch. Maybe elevated a little bit for Robbie, but you can see how he stays on his backside and drives it to the opposite field. That's really his strength. And Huey, it, we don't want to be the broken record we were last year and really the year before. The Rockies have to lower their walk rate. Two quick outs and then the walk to Seeger. Three walks and three innings for Lyles and you get burnt by it because then you're facing a tremendous offensive talent, Robbie Cano, and he, he drives in a run with two outs, but Seeger right. didn't truly earn his way on. No, he just he took what was given and then you're into the teeth of a lineup. You know, it might be different than the National League. You might be able to get away with it if you walk that seventh hole hitter. And you're to the eighth place and you know that the pitcher's behind but you know you start start dealing with things unnecessarily the most free walk heavy walks just it goes back to the old line and there's no defense against a walk no and there's no uh, defense uh, gets more difficult to play when you're in a lot of 2 0 counts now he was able to get a swing and a miss on a 2 0 pitch there to Nelson Cruz but you don't want to be 2 0 with a guy with Cruz at the plate. Catches the corner two and two. Got Cruz on a slider his first time up. Actually struck him out on three pitches, two of which were sliders. Goes back to it, and Cruz learned from the first A.B. and spit on that one, three and two. It's about the same spot that he struck out on yeah. the first inning. In fact, that probably was a more enticing pitch than the one that Nelson Swung out to fan well, that was the second inning, in, yeah. the, in the second. <laughs> he went off speed, and it's three and two again. Lyles was messing with that changeup grip that he learned from Jorge De La Rosa. Kind of a split change. Yeah, guys are always fiddling with their changeups and trying to find the right grip. Is it going to be a circle change? Is it going to be more of the split finger change? High fly ball to Blackman in center. That'll end the inning, but with two outs. Kyle Seeger comes around on a booming double from Robbie Cano. Two to one, Rockies.
Welcome back. Bottom of the third. Rockies are up two to one. The last game of spring training. Two guys that are very similar, Robinson Cano and Carlos Gonzalez, both expected to be major cogs in each team's lineup. Had very similar seasons last year. Struggled in the first half and then had fantastic second halves. You can see Carlos Gonzalez hit a home run every 9.6 plate appearances, which was incredible. Same with Robinson Cano. You talk about two guys coming back from injury. Robbie Cano this offseason, I know Mike has already mentioned it, had double hernia surgery, 331 batting average, 15 homers, 49 RBIs. What's interesting about Robbie Cano and Carlos Gonzalez, both watch each other all the time as far as when they're playing, uh, when their games are on TV, which is always fun to see the Latin flair. Uh, but not only that, Robinson Cano last year on balls that he hit over 100 miles an hour had one of the worst batting averages on balls in play in baseball. So you can see the first half uh, when you're dealing with injury, but seeing bad results, even though the guy, as you guys know, you may be lining out and not getting hits, but it's all about the result. He play a little second base too, can he, Mike? He, re he really can, and especially turning double plays. He's a lot of fun to watch. He can throw from all different arm angles, great hands. We, we, we were in Oakland last year, here and Ryan talk about him hitting the ball hard and not getting results. And he went 0 for Oakland for the three days, and I bet he lined out six, seven times yeah. and had nothing to show for it. Could be a cruel game, can it? It can be. One out, Trevor Story at the plate. Nathan Carnes, who's earned the fifth spot in the rotation for Seattle, struck out Story his first time up. Story won the Abby Greer Award for spring training MVP. Spilly was a past winner of that. That's Abby right. Greer Award. Corey Spilly. Sullivan. Yeah, like half our crew won the Abby Greer Award, huh? And I think that's so well done by the Rockies yes, to honor is. just the, the most tragic of circumstances when. Abby was struck by a car outside of Coors Field some years ago and lost her life. Walt Weiss looks on. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Story. One of the other things that 27 brings to the park every day he can fly when he's underway. I mean, we were chatting about this yesterday. He he consistently has run 6'5", 60s. His best time was a 6'4", And as you guys well know, yeah. Mike, Mike knows nothing about this. But <laughs> you're, you're right about his, that. His wife was a sprinter, so she knows about it. But <laughs> and, and, Mike, and Mike. kids can run, but it has nothing to do with, with, with flowers. <laughs> but 6'4", man, that, that's, 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 getting to the, that's getting to the next area code pretty that's quick. Right. That's right. It's not just he runs well underway. I'd run well the whole time. Ooh. I don't know about that, but uh, Nathan Carnes will take it. I thought Trevor held up. Two outs. King's Court is back in session at Safeco Field. King Felix will take the mound for his first home start of the season Sunday, April 10th, versus the A's. Your $30 tickle will include a brand new King's Court T and K card. Visit Mariners.com slash Felix. And uh, we'd appreciate, just because we're big fans of Felix Hernandez, that mm -hmm. he could tuck a few of those away and throw them in the mail uh, <laughs> on the morning of the 11th. Mike, I'm sure you have nothing else to do. Uh, two outs, here's Cargo. That has turned into a pretty special thing at Safeco Field. All the yellow out there in left field, down the left field line. And the chance that go on when he gets two strikes on yeah. somebody, it, it's it's electric. It's He's a lot of fun. Rockies missed him last year. I think he pitched the day before. They were heartbroken about yeah. it. <laughs> I got some guys. Oh, I would have liked to face him. Like, sure, you probably would have, but would you like to be 0 for 4 with three punches? Those numbers count, right? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the 1 1 to Gonzalez outside and high 2 and 1 cargo solid spring 259 he's hit three home runs driven in eight.
playing right about 215. I always marvel at what he did last year. There are few players in the game that can be as, I don't want to say bad, he just, he was, his knee was still getting better, but for two months, he didn't hit. He was hitting 204 with four home runs on June the 4th last year, and he ends up with 40 and, and a 271 average. How many guys in baseball could do that? Maybe the second baseman for Seattle? Less than 10. Yeah, not many. Put that kind of season together in four months. Good pitch, just missed. Three and two. You can see why this young man has earned that fifth spot for the Mariners. He's got some good stuff. Got a live fastball, good, good off-speed pitch, change-up, can go pitch in and away. Looks like a confident guy on the hill. And he gets the strikeout on Cargo. Back-to-back -back strikeouts in a 1-2-3 inning for Carnes. We go to the fourth, Rockies two, Mariners one. Spring training concluding later this afternoon. Dessert before your meal at the ball game. A little cotton candy looking good. Hey, folks, MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is now available. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out of market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Top of the fourth inning. All right, Rockets changes. Lead two to one. Hey, Huey, the changes are coming, my yeah. friend. <laughs> okay, get ready. <laughs> We're going to rely on Blowers on Seattle's side, but uh, we know that Barnes is in center field. Scott Oberg's on the mound. There's there's uh, Brandon Barnes. And up from the minor league camp in right field for Cargo is Mr. Stevens. We call him Mr. out of respect. Well, of we also call him Mr. because we're not sure what his first name is, right? It's Ryan Stevens. Thank you, Tavis Strand, in our truck. Mike, you've had a lot of practice this spring. Look at number 87. And I have. 96. Oh. Yep. What was the I highest think. number you ever wore when you were when you were in your first big league camp, maybe? Would have been when Jeff and I were with Montreal, and I'm not positive, but I think 83. Sounds about right. Adam Lynn with a base hit. Well, it's been a rough spring, Huey, for Scott Ober, and he's a guy that they'd hope to be in the bullpen mix. He'll find out later today, but the numbers have not been pretty, and the long balls really plagued him again. Well, and then that last start or the last appearance against the Cubs where he only lasted a third of an inning and gave up seven earned runs. John Lester took a beat. Yeah, and John Lester, I think, had an 050 batting average maybe. He'd gone, uh, I mean, that, that doesn't count here in spring training, but still. Uh, you, you have the pitcher, the opposing pitcher, take you deep. So Scotty needs to 
You have a quick and a, and a good inning, as you as you mentioned, Drew. They're still determining the final couple pieces of the puzzle after the ball game today. Trevor Story's out of the ball game. There's Christian Adamas. He will be part of the Rockies opening day roster. Christian overshadowed by Story as we pointed out, but he's had a good spring. Good player. He is, and, and the option you have with Adamas is he's a switch hitter. He's valuable on the bench, can play some second base, play some third base if you need him, play shortstop. And it's not so much that he he lost the job to Trevor Story. Trevor just, just won it. Good way and, of putting and it. And I think that's the way Christian has to look at it. I didn't do anything wrong. He just, he just got it uh, uh, because of his body of work. Nice play by Manny Acta down at third. <laughs> New third base coach for the Mariners. Thought he showed nice range there for a veteran guy. Manny's been around. A lot of new coaches on that staff for Scott. Everybody but Edgar. Edgar did, the, the, the team really reacted well to Edgar in the second half when he came aboard, didn't they? It was evident. Yeah, it, it, it really was. And I wasn't surprised by that. I think it'll be interesting to see a lot of changes in the lineup for the Mariners and, and Edgar having been here throughout spring training is going to be with them from day one to see how the offense goes with him there every single day. That's a chance back by the way pinch running for Adam Lynn. that time in the game for the Mariners too. They brought over 14 minor leaguers today. Because you guys are just busing from here to the right to the plane right to the airport. Yep. Guys will get into Arlington tonight and have a workout tomorrow and start things up on Monday. Remind me again day game or night game on Monday day game day game. Yeah. It's a night game for the Rockies down here in Arizona. We just have to change hotels today. That's all. Yeah, a little, little <laughs> bit of a drive. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit of a drive, and that's it. Gutierrez at the plate. Right. Mack takes off, and Huntley throws a perfect run. Out at second base. What, what a transition by Nick Huntley because that pitch was not right in the slot that you want to be throwing on. He, he had to take a step to his left. This but is but also watch throw. his feet. He has a, one of his foot. I, can't, I don't know. Is it his right one? No. Yeah, it's his right one. His back one slipped out from underneath him, and he still made the throw. I didn't even realize this was ball in the dirt. And that's, and when you lose your, your base, your throwing base, it makes it more difficult. But he didn't have a problem. He threw it right on the money. Back ground ball to DJ. Go to an eight and throw out Gutierrez. Great throw, Nick. That a boy. Nice job by Ober.
fourth inning. Drew Goodman, Mike Blowers, Jeff Houston, and in the dugout area, Ryan Spilboards. New third baseman's Luis Sardinas for Seattle. And the new second baseman also, Robbie Cano, is make his way to uh, the clubhouse. Tyler Smith's at second. And at first base, Day Ho Lee. <laughs> to the bus. <laughs> Sprinting off the field. Yes, they were. Here's Arenado. He'll get his final at bat of the spring. In the bottom of the fourth inning, he had a base hit through the left side his first time up. And boy, that had to feel good for him. Finally, a knock. Does that make an even 50 for the spring or not quite that high? Is that 33? Yeah, you know, it's funny you said that. He, this is his sixth. Uh, no, hold on a second. This is his 59th at bat. He has 32 hits, nine doubles, a triple, six home runs. He's driven in 17. And he's played in 22 games. He's only walked twice. He doesn't walk a lot. He, he does but, not. But here's something else that is way down. His strikeouts. Five strikeouts all of spring training. One and two. Drew Jackson taking over at shortstop. And Steve Clevenger hoping to get some good news today. He's hoping to be the backup catcher. Off his foot. Still a few anxious moments for yeah. one or two guys today. I know it. Well, whenever I describe spring training for us and, and now for you guys as retired players and broadcasters, it's my favorite time of year. It's oh, it, it's relaxing. The weather's great, et cetera, et cetera. And then I always qualify. I say, well, it's relaxing for for guys who have multi-year contracts <laughs> uh, and guys like Nolan and Cargo who know where they're going at the conclusion of March. For guys who are battling for that 25th spot, not as relaxing. And it's interesting how it's different across the board for those guys. I was talking about it last night with Jeff that there was one spring where nobody told me anything and, and I so I, and I really didn't know. And finally I was told to put my stuff on the bus. You made the club which was great. And then another spring where they said Mike you're going to be on the club but they had to make a roster move and they typically won't do that till they have to set the rosters which will be tomorrow morning. And so you're sitting there hoping that don't fall down the stairs. Don't trip over anything. Let's get this thing signed up so you're actually on the team. Yeah. And there are guys like that Peralta for the Mariners out in the bullpen. Um, he was told that he was on the club, but they have to make a roster spot to put him on the 25. So it's interesting for a lot of different reasons why things happen. Yeah, I mean, we can make it a ha-ha moment, but we've seen on the final day of spring training guys that were all set to make a 25-man roster get hurt. Famously, Ian Stewart was one of those guys. He had a gorgeous spring. About a decade ago, it may have been, you know what, it may have been 05 when Jeff Baker all of a sudden Baker, ended up right. getting the start. He hit a home run in his first career ball game, but that was going to be Ian Stewart. And Stewart uh, got, I think it was maybe a hamstring on the I final. I think it was a hamstring. Yeah, on and on then, the final day of spring training. Right. And that's why, I mean, even coming to the park today, you have anxious moments because you're live here. It's your livelihood. That's how you get paid. That's what you, you support your family. And so these guys, some of them don't know, is it going to be in AAA? Is it going to be in the big leagues? You have your service time. You got the pay. You got pension. There's so many more variables that are involved. And it's the big leagues. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's the top of that's the, the, the cream of the crop. Thing, right? that, that's it. 2-2 two, two, fouled off. Well, Clevenger's going through it as Mike mentioned, and, and Spilly, you've been that guy a couple times. I've been that guy multiple times. There is one time in Colorado Springs, we just finished our exhibition game, it was 2007. Steve Finley and John Mayberry were the non-roster invitees. They were the veteran guys that the Rockies felt they needed some help with. And it was after the exhibition game, I'm still in uniform, down the right field line, signing some autographs, kissing babies. And I get told by the coaching staff, hey, Spilly, Hurdle needs to talk to you. So I finally go into the office and I'm, I'm 
I have my stuff, I got my suit, got everything, and I go, did I make the team or not? And he goes, no, you're staying here, that's why all your bags are here, and that's why your suit's here. So have a good trip uh, oh. and enjoy it. We'll see you in a couple months when we need you. And that's exactly what ended up uh, happening. But you talk about waiting till the last second. The team was leaving on the bus, and I was still signing autographs. Well, it turned out okay for you. Yeah, we're, we're happy to report. Yeah, I How made it just fine. Yes. How about Nathan Carnes? Well, four straight strikeouts. He, he, early in the spring training, he was really struggling with his command, especially his fastball leaving it up. Ooh, what a play by Drew Jackson. Oh. A sparkler to take a hit from Mark Reynolds. And that's seven in a row now, retired by Nathan Carnes. Two to one, the Rockies are leading. This is a heck of a play. Step of the game, the ball will find you. to the fifth inning with Mike Blowers and my partner Jeff Houston. I'm Drew Goodman upstairs. Uh, fellas, everything's going uh, just as the managers would like right now. Yeah, able to get the regulars out before anybody gets hurt. That's what you want to see. And also an opportunity. You saw Drew Jackson make that great play. These kids are excited to be in this game. Sure. Um, so they'll get a good look by the manager and the coaching staff. And for the Rockies, too, you get, to, you get some of your guys out of there. A couple guys are still left in, but you had Scott Oberg pick, uh, pitch last inning. Who's uh, you know fighting for a spot and Jason Gurkha who is in the ball game right now who's had a dynamite spring. Yeah I don't know if anybody's had any better numbers than Jason Gurkha and they've been kind of Huey below the radar. Right they have because you coming in as a left hander you already had Jake McGee you know Boone Logan was a little bit late to the party as far as when he started to throw but Gurkha just went out there and said well don't forget about me I, I, I'm still here and I'm putting up some some numbers. Chris Keck is at first base for Mark Reynolds. Scott Burcham is at third base for Nolan. The only two regular position players left behind the plate Nick Hundley and at second base DJ and they'll be gone after next half inning when they get their second at bat. Same for Martin, who's waiting on deck. Jason Gurkha on the spring, 1 0 with a 1 8 6 ERA in nine ball games. He's only given up the nine hits and nine and two thirds. 2 2 and Gurkha spins a beautiful curveball. Clevenger's gone. Let's go to the Rockies dugout. 
Ryan Spielborg has found a first baseman who can hit the long ball. Yeah, that's right. I did find a first baseman that can hit the long ball. He was actually proud of his last at bat. If you remember, he ended last inning with a hard hit ground ball to short diving play, and you didn't have to run, right? That's the perfect at bat for you. It is. Uh, you know, you, you give it the courtesy run to first, and then, you know, you feel good about your at bat, and then you don't have to score first to home on a double. You know, that's a good spring training at bat. Obviously, uh, you come in this offseason for the Rockies to help him with uh, – right hand hitting against left hand pitching kind of tell me about this camp and what, what was your idea with with this group being around them well you know it's uh, I thought it was a good opportunity for me and Walt especially playing in uh, course you know and uh, I talked to Walt and he was like you know basically whoever swinging a hot bat's going to play and um, you know the left handed pitchers in the NL West aren't, aren't very fun to face anyway so but you know I'm just I just try to play hard and, and, and put together consistent at bats and uh, you know hopefully that gets me in the lineup one of the guys that I've heard that you've been helping mentor, Trevor Story, starting shortstop. What have you been doing with him, and what kind of salty vet stuff have you been doing for the guy? Uh, you know, I've just been giving him a hard time here and there. Um, I make him carry my bat and glove around camp on the backfields back there and, uh, you know, make him get me some waters in the clubhouse or a Red Bull or whatever. And, uh, you know, I just give him a hard time. Uh, the, the first day I started, he, we were hitting in the cage. And he hit and then left and then pick up the balls. No way. Yeah, so that was the, uh, the start of it. And then from then on, I've been wearing him out a little bit. But I told him, I said, hey, if I stop giving you a hard time, it means I don't like you anymore. So, you know, hopefully I, I can wear him out all year. That's interesting. Who was the veteran that kind of took you under your wing when you were with the Diamondbacks? Uh, it was definitely uh, probably Orlando Hudson. Uh, he gave me a hard time all the time. I remember one time I was, it was my first camp, and I was in the training room just getting a Band-Aid. I wasn't going to bother anybody, and I asked the trainer for any help. And, he came in there and, and, and yelled at me. He said, I'm too young to be in the training room and uh, basically kicked me out. And I never went back in there until about my third or fourth year in the big leagues. So, uh, you know, just stuff like that. I got worn out. People are going to get worn out. It's just part of the game. And, I mean, we have fun with it. Well, we appreciate your time. Good luck to, on Monday, opening day. Welcome to the Rockies. Drew, back to you guys. Spilly, thanks much. Jason Gurka rolled his ankle a little bit. That's why he's uh, being visited upon. You see the right ankle turn over, probably caught. And when you're talking about going out onto a mound with a different stride length, one guy's a right-hander, another guy's a left-hander, you step in, in halfway into their uh, cleat mark, and that's how you get the rolled ankles. He looks like he's good to go. This is Efren Navarro at the plate, two outs, nobody on, and he slashes at this one, fouls it off. I think for Jason too, even with that little rolled ankle, if he could still feel like he can pitch, he's not coming out. <laughs> I'm, no. I'm, I'm here. I, I'm going to finish strong. <laughs> he's tightened up that breaking ball. I, he? I was thinking the same exact thing, Drew. That it's not as loopy. It's it's. it's you know, coming in looking like the fastball, and then it'll drop down and away. Here's the 2 1. And this is line to right, and a diving catch made by Ryan Stevens up from minor league camp. Something he can call home about. Well done. And a 1 2 3 inning for Gurko. We'll go to the sixth, 2 1, Colorado.
Final day of spring training 2016. And Nathan Carnes has pitched very well in his final tune-up before he takes the ball in game five of the regular season for Seattle. Nick Huntley's going to lead things off. He was retired seven in a row. Carnes has struck out four, excuse me, five of the last seven he has faced. Gave up both runs in the second inning. Nick Hundley had a sack fly in that two-run second for the Rockies. He takes down low, ball one. And Paulson hit a pretty good pitch off of Carnes to drive in a run. I, I think if, for me, looking at Carnes, he's just building off of what his last start looked like. Very good change up today, sharp breaking ball. His fastball again is going to be 91 to 93, but it has that late life to it, and you'll see some late swings. But I like the fact that he's commanded the bottom of the strike zone. Again, early in spring training, he was up quite a bit, but he's been able to figure that out. One one in the air to right field. Starting back was Alex Jackson. Now he comes on and makes the play. Ben Paulson will come up. And let's go to the dugout again, Ryan Spielborgs. Thanks, guys. I got Steve Foster. Steve, it's your second season as the Rockies pitching coach. Kind of describe what this spring training has felt like for you. It's been great. I mean, uh, everybody knows everybody a little bit better after being together for a year. And it's been a great spring training with preparation and, and guys are ready. Tell me, you guys had a lot of buzz early in camp with all the young pitchers. Kind of describe some of these young guys and then take me through the starting rotation right now with your big league team. The Rockies fans have a lot of hope. And uh, that hope uh, lies in a lot of the young pitching that we got to see early. Uh, Kyle Freeland, uh, Hoffman, Sensatella. Marquez, these guys have big arms, big power arms, and have a feel for pitching, and, and they're the next wave of Rockies arms to come, and, and it's exciting for us, and it also creates competition. And uh, we have pressure every day in pro ball, and some of that pressure is knowing there's somebody behind you that's pretty good, and so we're excited, and it's been a great camp seeing those young guys. Give me a, your personal opinion on what you've learned over the last year. Obviously, last year, first year pitching coach at Altitude. What have you grown in and learned from that? I've learned not to talk about altitude much. Okay, well, we'll talk about <laughs> and I've learned that uh, you can't walk, guys. And we haven't done a real good job of that in my first year uh, of being the pitching coach here. And I think uh, one thing that we focused on this spring and done a good job of it is attacking in the zone early, forcing contact, daring the hitter to hit. And I think that's what's going to spell success at Coors Field or anywhere. Uh, Jason Gurka made a huge adjustment, and I, I heard about it from Darren Holmes, and I know you were part of it. Kind of describe what that adjustment was for Gurka and the results that he's been getting. Well, he swung out with his leg, and he got out of direction, and that uh, really created a problem for him to repeat pitches. And this spring, he came in prepared and ready and was able to repeat his delivery in direction. And uh, I think he now has 20 strikeouts and no walks. Yeah. He's certainly made a case for himself. Well, thank you, Steve. Good luck on opening day. Appreciate your time. Drew, boys. All right. And DJ with a fly ball down the right field line. And Alex Jackson, former number one pick, makes a nice running catch. Two solid plays from Jackson. Ten in a row set down by Nathan Carr. He's been sensational. Two on Colorado.
Rockies. See if he goes a couple innings. Chris more of a long haul guy and a spot starter. And had some terrific moments last year. A couple of complete games in a Rockies uniform at Coors Field. And this spring, after having to sit out for a while with a finger issue, is back healthy. And still trying to build up the arm strength and lengthen out where you can go six or seven innings. And Chris isn't quite to that point, but each time it's a little bit better, a little bit stronger. Get a chance today to, as you mentioned, Drew, maybe go out there for at least two innings. Zach Osborne, number 97, is in the ballgame at second for DJ LeMayhew. And let's see who's behind the plate. That's Wilkins Jimenez. 92 is Wilkins Jimenez. So the Rockies have gotten all of their starters out of there. And I believe Seattle has as well. In the air, right center field. And Luis Sardinas on the first pitch flies out. Join the Mariners in Boeing for Salute to Armed Forces Night on Saturday, April 9th versus the A's. Arrive early for a special pregame ceremony, and then following the game, 10,000 fans will receive a collectible military coin. Tickets at Mariners.com. Tyler Smith will take his first turn. Robinson Cano was one for two, an RBI double for Cano. His final tune-up before taking on the Rangers on Monday. So just to finish what Steve Foster was talking about to Spilly and how impressive a camp Jason Gurkha has had. We saw Gurkha up last year with the Rockies. Gurkha went 10 and two thirds, 20 punch outs, no walks. He was right on the money with that. 20 punch outs in 10 and two thirds. And he didn't walk anybody. Well, I mean, you talk about making a case. Right. I mean, if you don't make it, you can't, you're you not going to go home and put your head on the pillow and say, boy, I wish I did this or I wish I did that. You did all you could do. And we talked about it earlier in this broadcast about how some guys can come into camp and get ready to go because they have contracts that are saying, oh, you know, I've got this. Other guys, when they step onto the field, their first day of just workouts, they've got to be on top of their game. Jason Gurker is one of those guys and some of the other guys. I mean, Brandon Barnes had to be that way or or, or maybe uh, Christian Adamas, Trevor Story, that they couldn't wait until the middle of the month to start doing their thing. It was do their thing from day one. You're competing in infield practice. Yes. The way you take ground balls. Yep. The way you throw. Yep. I think it's such a difficult time of year also to evaluate. I mean, there, again, the 20 punch outs cannot be more impressive, especially in, when you're talking about a, basically two an inning. But how much do front offices, managers, pitching coaches, hitting coaches, when they sit down and evaluate, how much do they take into account? Okay, well, how many of those were off a double A guy, right. a call up guy? You know, how, many, how much was against big league true big league guys I mean and that's got to be part of the equation because we all know the month of March very important month but it can also lie a little bit a little bit like September yes. you know, those two months sometimes are difficult to to get a true gauge but I still go back to zero walks zero walks there are things that you can get maybe even down here looking at some of the batting averages or the guys home run total here in spring training the balls flying out of here I think the pitchers are at a disadvantage, right. so you have to look at that, too, and in putting those kind of numbers up. Being aggressive, staying in the strike zone, not walking anybody. Um, that's pretty impressive down here. I, I think you can get fooled more by the hitters, young hitters down here, than you can yes. anything else. I think those numbers that you're talking about here, that's impressive. We yeah. were talking before we went on the air today, and, and I think you, you made a, a very valid point, too, is, you know, spring training is one thing, but then when you get into the, the season, the difference is? Pressure. 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 And it's immediate. You feel it right there. <laughs> yeah, when going you wake the, up. Going to the ballpark is different. When you wake up Monday morning, you're getting ready to play, you already feel the pressure of that game that day. Right. That's exactly right. And you have to learn to deal with that. You know, sometimes that's the reason why guys make 
trips up and down two, three, four times if they're eventually going to figure it out and have a career at this level. They don't always do it the first time up. And, and that's the biggest reason why. You go up, you fail, and you start to think about the emotions that you were having, how fast the game was going, the pressure of getting that bunt down in the seventh inning and the manager looking at you when you don't. I mean, you have to deal with all of those things. And I think sometimes coming up for a short period of time and going back down is, is maybe the best way to do it, especially if it's a young player, and then bring them back up, give them time to think about what had happened and move them forward that way. And then, then you're not in awe the right. second time you go up because you know, no matter when you started playing this game, most for most of us, it was four, five, six years old, and you always dreamed about playing in the big leagues. So the first time you get there, you're like, wow, I made it. Yeah. Now how do I stick? Yeah. What, two, what? two walks is set up Deho Lee with some traffic against Chris Russell. And then the, then the, you go you show up to the ballpark one day and you go what do you mean I'm in the lineup I actually have to go <laughs> out there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Bucky Dent did me a huge favor. I was traded went to the big leagues and this ball's hammered to left field and it is going to one hop the wall. One run is scored. Two runs are going to score on that double by Lee and the Mariners take a 3 2 lead. And you just heard Steve Foster say this wow. club has to throw more strikes than they did a year ago. And Chris Russell, after getting the first man, walked two in a row and he pays for it. Well, and then he leaves one right over the middle of the plate. Belt high. And this is what the Mariners are hoping they're going to get from Lee. He's going to platoon, platoon some at first base with Lynn. Be the right handed power hitter guy off the bench maybe DH some. It was quite a battle that went on to spring training for that job. He is going to be the guy and they're hoping that a few pinch hit doubles will certainly help. All right, Mike, who do we have at the plate here? Right now we have Dario Pisano. Nice. You were going to get that even before the graphics look, right? He's, 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 he was here for the first part of spring. Hey, Jeff, I, I showed up at Yankee Stadium. Bucky Dent calls me in the office and says, hey, get your work in the next couple of days. You're not going to play. Take the pressure off of me right away. I said, fine, that's great. First game, I'm sitting there on the bench, he's thrilled. About the seventh inning, he tells me, All right, go pinch it. <laughs> it was great because I was, no warning, just go do it. Just go do it. Just go do it. And and I, I ran up there, I think it was the second or third pitch, put the ball in play. I was out, ran back in the dugout. It was over. Relaxed right after that. Is the back leg shaking in that first day, B? It was or strange. It just seemed like a really long walk from the dugout to the plate. Anytime you're, you're doing something that's different, especially when it means that much to you. Yeah. Uh, for me, I just I just felt all out of sorts and wasn't it was like I'd never done it before. Kind of like an out of body experience. Yeah, exactly. Did you both feel that first at bat? I, I don't want to go deep here. I want the first the first pitch that that ball gets away and another run's going to score. Lee trudges home and it's four to two Seattle. So it's been a rough inning for Russ and a couple of walks and a wild pitch. But that that first a B where you like you know what was, the first the first one close I'm going to try to get in play. I was thrilled to put it in play. Yeah. I punched out and I'd never been as happy in my life as a strikeout. <laughs> I mean honestly because yeah. I was like hey I got a big league at bat. Yeah. Can't take it I away. Can't take it away. And then I got to hit my second at bat. But boy that first one. Well he can run a little bit. And that's going to go into the camera well. This will go down as a base hit and then an E5 with the advancement off the throw. Drew Jackson got up the line. Yes, he did. He's a good athlete. He do a lot of things well. That's uh, that that advice that's coming I assume from uh, Seattle's coaching staff. 
get ready to hit. That is that is the first thing you have to do. You can't, I don't care what level it is. If you're not ready to hit, <laughs> you don't get yourself ready to hit, it ain't going to work no. out real well. Steve Clevenger <laughs> at the plate. And he was ready to hit. He's got a base hit to right center field. That's going to drive home Jackson. And it's 5-2, to two, a four-run uprising here in the sixth for Seattle. That's to feel good for Clevenger. Now yeah, we talked about it trying to be the backup catcher for this club. He and Brantley have been going at it with a solid base hit. And for him, too, left on left. Yeah, that's got to help. And for Chris Russell, just not the control that he was seeking. Two walks, and then that pitch was center cut. Daniel Robertson taking his turn eighth man to hit here for Seattle in the sixth. And he pulls it back. Justin Miller now has gotten up into the bullpen for the Rockies. It's a lot of pitches up today for Chris. You and Mike touched on this earlier, and it's not to make an excuse for anybody out there. This is another wild pitch as Wilkins Jimenez couldn't block it. This is the, the final weekend, last night in Peoria, today. It, it's tough to play in those games, especially for the regulars, because their, mi their mind's already on game one of the regular season, you would imagine. And it might have even gone back further than that, maybe even to Monday or Tuesday of this week, because they've had enough. The position players have had enough. They have, and, and they're, they're, they've been ready to go, and I think this is a week for them, again, to, to be careful, not try to do too much and hurt themselves. Cut the chops! Good audio there, huh? We have a, do we have a mic on the, the second base bat? <laughs> Very nice. Big inning, four for the Mariners, 5-2 Seattle. between the Mariners and the Rockies. Seattle leads 5-2. to two. Hey, Be sure to catch the best fireworks show in the town this summer on Friday, July 8th and Saturday, July 9th, following the games against the Philadelphia Phillies right before the All-Star break. Saw a little fireworks last night in Peoria after the game. Barnes, and he's out by a step. Clevenger threw him out. 
Well, Prevenger with the base hit, and it comes out on that bunt, makes a strong throw to first. I think he wants to make a club. I think he does. Able to show a strong arm right here, too, as he comes back out. Wasted no time. You'll see the barehanded play and gets rid of it quickly with something on it. And a good idea by Barnes. Christian Adam is getting his first A.B. with one out. Still out there, Nathan Carnes. So he's going to get, looks like, six full innings of work. And he's been sensational. He had a one, two, three first inning. A little hiccup in the second when he gave up a couple of runs. Since then, he has been perfect. 11 in a row set down by Carnes. I want to leave uh, the desert with a good feeling. Nathan Carnes going to have a real good feeling getting on the plane this afternoon. He should because this will be two outings in a row for him. It's amazing sometimes when you get the news that you're hoping for, how you relax and you can go out and be the player that everybody else is expecting to see because, again, he and Paxton were going at it. Uh, for that fifth spot and I didn't think that either one of them were pitching particularly well. They had to make a decision though when they went with Carnes again right before his previous outing he's really settled down and thrown the ball well. So will Paxson then go to triple A. Triple A. The good thing about being in triple A with the Mariners it's not far to get to the big leagues. No it's not. Right down the street in Tacoma. Ryan Stevens takes outside. Rockies two hits in the ball game again in the second inning as we were discussing. Nolan Arenado had a base hit. Parra had a walk and then a double from Ben Paulson, which had followed a Nick Hundley sack fly. Rockies get on a bus after the ball game and head about 20 minutes away to their Quiet. normal team hotel during the regular season. The only decision we have to make Huey is do we take the 101 or do we take Lincoln across. Well, we're going to take Lincoln today because the 101 south is closed until Monday morning. Well they you agreed to I'm sign on the way down from the from our other hotel you would have seen that. No because I was taking Lincoln <laughs> the whole way and you know when I drive I don't I pay do, that uh, close yeah. attention. <laughs> That's why I told yeah. you which way we're going. <laughs> <laughs> if I see you hitchhiking I may just pass you. <laughs> That's ball four so <laughs> Ryan Stevens goes to first that ends a run of 11 in a row set down. Actually 12 in a row set down. Carnes doing his mad Hungarian Going behind the mound to have a little uh, <laughs> chat, chit with chat with himself. I was talking to Jerry Depoto when they were having the battle between him and, and James Paxton and I said well if one of them is going to be the fifth starter would you put the other one in the bullpen long relief or, or something like that and he said that James he wants to keep him in as, as a starter obviously adds depth to the organization if somebody gets hurt but he thought that Nathan Carnes to your point Drew, because of his attitude and the way he goes about his business could pitch out of the bullpen. There's Jerry who had a terrific career in Rockies uniform as a reliever. Oh he's such a cerebral guy. And, you know, Jerry's one of those people he would be successful in whatever endeavor he uh, set his mind to. You know whether it was broadcasting or you know going into a different business altogether. I agree, and but I want it to be with the Mariners in the job that he's been yeah. doing right now. You know what? And he is so excited. We, we spent some time last night. He's so excited about this job, this opportunity with Seattle. He and his wife love Seattle, and I think it's going to be a real good marriage. I think so too. And I'll tell you, with the National League, Jerry Jerry allowed. He said, "Man, I still pull really hard for the Rockies." You know, as a franchise, he spent a lot of time with, and then transitioned to, you know, to the front office a little bit. And he said, "I I check every day how they're doing, and it was very complimentary of the job that Jeff Breidich has done thus far." Here's the one-two, and that's a base hit. Nice job by Bertram, and that's going to bring home Ryan Stevens after his stolen base. So. The Rockies counter with a run here in the sixth. It's five to three. Two out knock for the kid. 
Scott Burcham. Yeah, the kids are making the impression. He had the stolen base and then fights off a fastball up and in, pulls the hands inside, gets it to center field. Drive in Stevens. Cole Anderson at the plate. It's always a dead giveaway for the minor leaguers because they got the double flaps on the helmet. <laughs> well, it used to be, too, that they didn't have their name on the back of their jersey, but this year the Rockies didn't put names on any of their jerseys. I'll tell you something that hasn't changed is when the minor leaguers get a chance to play in the big league game, they're going up there hacking. Yeah, it's not. I didn't come here to walk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two count on Anderson with Bircham at first. And he has got to end the inning. So the Rockies get a run off Nathan Carts, make it 5-3. You have a plane to catch, my friend. And, uh, Enjoyed it, guys. It's, I did. Yep, it's always yeah. good to see yeah, you, Mike. Always good to see always you. Better. We won't see you during the regular season. Who knows beyond that, but, but best of luck this year. Have a great year. Yeah. Mike Flowers is uh, off to Texas, 5-3 here. Sixteen, and the regular season will commence for some tomorrow for the Rockies and for the Mariners it'll be Monday Rockies will stay right here in Arizona they'll take on the Diamondbacks and Seattle will be in Texas and Arlington to take on the Rangers new center fielder Daniel Suero is in center field and a new shortstop for the Rockies Wilson Soriano so Blackman started Barnes got an at bat and Suero will take it to the house and then uh, Wilson Soriano after Story and Thomas got some time at short. New pitchers, Justin Miller. A tenth game this spring for Justin. Twelve hits and nine and a third. Just three walks, twelve punch outs. There's a strike. Efren Navarro with a second at bat. He lined out to right his first time up. Outside. Two balls and a strike. Be pretty good pitching matchup in Arlington on Monday. Cole <laughs> Hamels and King Felix. King Felix. You're talking about the Rangers and 
And getting you Darvish back, how big will that be in, in a boost to go along with Cole Hamels? Cole Hamels for a full season. Got a matchup tomorrow. In Kansas City with the Mets and the Royals leading things off tomorrow night. Yeah, the, the rematch of the World Series, mm -hmm. at least for a day. Silent Matt Harvey going for the Mets. <laughs> Silent. Yeah, not talking to the media. No. He's upset with uh, some of the reporting from last week. You know, the other thing with Texas, that misses, Martin Perez who came back from Tommy John surgery and made a dozen starts last year. You have him for a full season. That's a kind talented I forgot about kid. him, yeah. yeah. Really talented. And despite all of those injuries to their staff, they won 88 ball games and won the division last year. Yeah, took over from the Astros, who you thought were, okay, going into September, the Astros will go ahead and have it locked up. There's a walk. And that's got to be one of the disturbing things for Walt Weiss, Steve Foster looking on. A lot of walks today by the Rockies in this final tune-up. Let's go to the dugout. Ryan Spielborgs with uh, the Barnyard. I know. I got the Barnyard. We're about to give you a little comic relief. Obviously, another walk. We don't like to see that. But tell me, how has this camp been for you? That's good. You know, I came in with uh, a mindset of working on the process, not uh, worrying about results. And uh, you know, I feel like my spring has been pretty good, you know, just working on uh, – some mechanical things and, and the process of hitting and you know just going out there and grinding every day. This is your third camp now with the Colorado Rockies. What's been the biggest change for you seeing from three years ago to now? Uh, just the growth you know I, I know who I am now. Oh. Um, when I was a little younger I just went out there and went 130 miles an hour every time and didn't really have a plan but now I'm going up there with uh, a plan every at bat um, you know trying to help the team win and just do the little things. Do you feel like you're growing into being a veteran on this team, uh, just moving forward with all the stuff that you do? Obviously, you got some young guys coming up as well. Yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't call myself a veteran, but, uh, you know, just having that, that presence and, and what I do in the clubhouse, you know, uh, just picking up guys when, when uh, time's needed and uh, just talking with guys, you know, especially young guys. Uh, just go out there and, and let them have fun. You know, that's a big key. Well, how does it? How do you have fun playing baseball? I, I know that's part of your your whole shtick, the Red Bull in the can type guy. But I mean, where does that come from? Well, it's a double Red Bull in the can. But uh, <laughs> you know, just, you know, he, he taught me how to play the game. He taught me how to play the game right. Um, you go out there and you give everything you have that day to help your team win. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. You know, I, I come to win every day. I want to play hard, give my my team the just, best chance. Obviously, you lost your grandfather this offseason, and on behalf of all of us, we, we give you our condolences. So we're watching a, a double right here. You have a new tattoo. You have your grandfather's name on it. And wh what does it say? Um, you know, it's it's really just his signature. Uh, you know, I got an old document from my, my grandmother, and uh, I have my tattoo artist uh, trace it and then put it on me. Um, it's just a, a simple reminder of everything he's taught me and uh, just gives me that relaxation that I know he's there every day. Well, he's proud of you. We appreciate it, Mike. Hey, guys. But by the way, um, I saw Spilly down here. He was doing his homework right before the game, and I just want to call out. This is, uh, let's see. <laughs> Hold on. What's your uh, passcode here? It's <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> You're not supposed to give that out over the That's air. That's his passcode. No, guys, I don't know if you guys can see this up there. Oh, you show it. Oh, Charlie's a great go. camera guy. We got Spilly's little. I wash today, guys. He's good. I can't act like he's doing something, but he's really not. Just a bunch of eye wash. That, he, uh, thank you for calling. Made a out. career of that. And, and you know what? And make sure, hey make sure, Spilly, you, you get it right. He, Denver. Yeah, make sure you get it right. He, he's a double, 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 double red, red maybe even a triple, double red yeah. maybe even triple. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, barnyard. What, what, he's the best. Isn't he, he is. You know, just having him around just makes your day better. He, he's. He's energetic. He's got a smile on his face. Enjoys playing the game like a like a like a kid. Uh, we don't know how it's going to turn out to la to after the game, but I could tell you one guy who is a huge fan of his, and that's the manager, because well, he just he he has an infectious personality. He, he's going to run through. He truly will run through a wall for you, and. He's a, he's a guy you want in the mix. And, and we always remind people on the last day of spring training, throughout spring training, and, and Jeff, you knew this to be true, 
25 guys are going to be really happy today, and there's going to be a couple of guys that aren't happy. Sure. You know, that's that's why Glen Allen Hill has such a difficult job. When you're managing a triple-A club, it, you're going to have a portion of your roster that's really unhappy that they're a triple-A. You're going to have a yeah. portion that are happy because they've moved up maybe from double-A. You might only have two guys at triple-A that are happy right. because the other guys are mad because they got sent down. The other guy's thinking that they should be up in the big leagues. So you got a, you got 20 guys there that are that are kind of, well, I should be here or I should be there. There's two or three that say, yeah, and that's why he does have it. It's it's one of those tough jobs in minor league baseball is being the AAA manager. But to go back to your point a moment ago for, for Brandon Barnes is you look at him, and, and we've said it before, and I think it bears repeating that he plays baseball with the football, football mentality. Yes, he does. But in a good way. Yeah, well, I admire that. Yeah. I know you do as well. I do. Here's Barnes, he's heading out. And it will take, and we were alluding to this, it will take more than the 25 guys yes. that break camp for every team. It's going to take, you know, probably another 15 or so to produce a major league season, hopefully produce, you know, more wins than losses. So, if you, you know, even if you end up in Albuquerque initially, from a Rockies perspective, you're a phone call away. And that's something that a manager, I know Walt said this many times, will remind the guys that he has to let go here in late March, or early April, actually, April 2nd, and say, listen, we're going to need you. That's why you have to have depth in your minor league system. You have to be able to have guys that you can call up to to be that that guy when you're needing that 31st player, whatever it is, it, position it might be. But the second thing is, is for those guys that don't make the club today, when they go down to Albuquerque, that they make sure that they don't pout, that they don't sit there and go, oh, whoa, whoa me, I need to go out and put up numbers because if somebody gets hurt or somebody's not doing it early on, I might be the call. But if I'm not doing my job, I'm not going to get it. Yeah. That's why we always compliment what a great job Glenn Allen Hill does because G. Hill is, you know, he's a baseball guy. And you, you played with him in a couple different stops yes. in the big leagues. And he was a heck of a baseball player. But he's also... He's a he's a philosopher. He's a psychologist. Man, that's three walks now by Justin Miller, and the, and the bases are loaded. Or oh, that hit him? Okay, two two walks, and uh, he just nicked Alex Jackson. Well, Alex just turned into it, left the arm out. Seven walks and a hit batter in the game by the Rockies. So this they they want to push the lead on this one. This is when you say, standpoint. well, it's just spring training. <laughs> you know, you, you, you don't want to be back on that. You can fall back on that for one more half a game. Yep, that's it. Deho Lee, who boomed a double off the left field wall to drive in two last inning, has uh, the bases loaded. Okay. He takes a strike. But but G. Hill, because of yeah. his ability to put a guy on the couch and in his office, is just a, a perfect guy to run things at triple a albuquerque well and for g too he's you know he's been an everyday player he's been a bench player a guy coming off he's been released he's been traded i mean all of the things that happens during a course of a career it's probably happened to g hill yep and he's coached and he's managed and he understands emotions of players big swing from deho lee 6-3 Seattle as they bat in the top of the seventh. Jason Mott down initially will be on the disabled list to start the season. Signed a two-year deal in the offseason to fortify the back end of the bullpen, help fortify the back end of the bullpen. This is down the right field line. It's going to fall in no man's land. Rockies did make a couple of moves this morning. The guy who had a, a solid camp again, Johan Flande, was sent down to Albuquerque. And Kyle Parker, former number one pick in 2010, was uh, outright released last night. And he was taken off the roster you know, prior to spring training. That's a blooper off the end of the bat that's going to drop and drive in a run. So, Deho Lee, two at bats, he's driven in three. 
7-3 Seattle and the bases remain loaded and there's still nobody out. Lee hit the double to left field to drive in a run. This time he just flares one off the end of the bat to right field. But still, he, kind of that classic Japanese swing, Far Eastern swing, and he just puts it a play but comes out now for a pinch runner because his day is over. Yeah, it, 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 it does, does have the makings of that Far Eastern swing, except he is not a diminutive guy. This is no, a big, no, strong guy. man. And, he can hit it a long way, so a rough outing for Justin Miller. We'll tell you about the change when we come back. Boone Logan will be next, 7-3. Oh, you're it. <laughs> That's the best about the burp. Kids just running around, enjoying the day at the ballpark. I love the burp. When most of the time, that's where we'll, I, I'm, right? we'll sit yeah. if we're not working. Boone Logan's on. He's had a real good spring. Feels healthy again. And Dario late. Pisano will come up with the bases loaded. Yeah, for Boone, it was just a late start to when he appeared in a game. And real quick, I said Lee a moment ago was from Japan, actually South Korea. I apologize. My apologies. But the, the, but far, the, far, but East, the far Eastern yes. approach. Yes. He doesn't bail quite as much, and, and you wouldn't want him to because of his physical size. Most of the time, those guys try to keep both hands on the bat as they're swinging. You know, yep. Whether they're running out of the box, they still keep both hands and, and don't finish like a Walt Reniak or, or George Brett, those type of guys where I, you know the top hand comes off. Here's a, a name from the past of <laughs> great hitting coaches, Walter Walt Reniak. Yeah. There was a period of time, especially a lot of those Royals, they all look oh, the same. All well, he was their hitting coach, and then he went over to the White Sox. I read a book. I read Ted Williams' book again, The Science of Hitting This Winter. Did you? Oh, my. I bet. And then uh, I think, believe it was 70, 71, 72. Huey, that's one of my favorite books. Isn't it, though, Spilly? It is so good. And you know and what? It, it I applies to today. Along with it the cat the cat in the hat, right, Spilly? Well, the cat in the hat is still, I think I'm on reading level two, so that's the next one up. Fly ball left field, Cole Anderson will make the catch and coming home with the eighth run for Seattle. And everybody moving up, in fact. Tyler Smith scored. Huey, I want to get back to the whole Ted Williams thing because I felt like if I was a player, I should have read it, and I didn't. Yes. And part of the reason why I should have read it is because he talks about having an uppercut. And it makes perfect sense. The ball is traveling downward because of gravity, so why swing down? I think as players, we always thought we had to swing down to have a shorter stroke. 
but even Michael Kadir was talking about Harlem Killebrew, uh, who helped Michael Kadir work on his signature, so it was nice and legible, was telling Michael, swing uphill. The ball's coming down, I, swing up. And that's one thing I took out of reading that book again, again this winter. I remember I had read it a long, long time ago, but didn't really put that piece into the equation. And maybe it was my type of swing, I don't know, but it makes perfect sense because the ball's coming down, you have the uppercut, you stay on plane with the ball for a longer period of time, keep that bat in the zone. The other thing I, I want to talk about, because I think that book is fantastic, Ted Williams was looking at advanced metrics long before advanced metrics ever came to the forefront. If you look at his batting chart, which he paid attention to, and which more players nowadays are looking at as well, he saw the zones that he hit really well at and realized that he shouldn't be swinging at certain pitches that he couldn't handle. <laughs> well, the pitches he couldn't handle, he was still hitting 250. I know. <laughs> You know, everybody else is in the 100s or might have have everybody. The other thing I, I, I took out of that and, re, and really didn't even know, we were talking about shifts, right. but the Cleveland Indians employed a shift on him back in 48, 49. Yep. So he said, well, you know, at times I just hit it the other way because I wasn't going to hit into that shift. And this is something the three of us have talked about before, that all the great hitters, they're, they're different styles, different approaches. They all they all share two things. Uncanny hand-eye coordination. And great, great vision. This is back at Boone Logan. Two outs. Yeah, the vision being able to recognize a pitch sooner than everybody else. But he, he would also talk about it, and maybe it was because back then that, you know, the starting pitcher went all nine innings. You didn't have it. But his first at bat, I believe it was like 90, 92% of the time, he would take the first pitch because he wanted to see what that pitcher had. Very rarely would he go up in his first at bat and swing at the first pitch. How much quality work did you guys get in or, or identification with a pitcher you weren't as familiar with Standing and, and now guys Helton was famous for this. I mean he was almost right behind the, the hitter while he was in the quote unquote on deck circle. But how much could you see the slot that the ball was coming out of and really gauge movement, etc. when you were in the on deck circle? To me, I didn't think a whole lot. It helped somewhat, but it you still didn't get a true read until you stepped in the in the batter's box. But it is nice to still have that visual with video. Uh, and a new thing that's going to happen now is they're going to have iPads in the dugout. This is popped to shallow center. This could be a problem, and it was caught. Well, it was up in the sun. Nice job by Daniel Suero to help out Wilson Soriano. And nobody got hurt, most importantly. Three more for Seattle. They're up 8 3.
Baseball 2016 for the Rockies and Seattle Mariners. Mike Flowers is heading to Arlington as we speak. Well, not literally, but he's getting uh, getting ready to go as the Mariners will open up in Arlington against the Rangers. Here's one of their newest relievers, Steve Ciszek, the former closer for the Marlins. See his work this spring training. Steve will have the baseball here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And the Rockies will send up Chris Keck for his first at bat. Yeah, for Steve, he is one of those kind of anomalies in the bullpen that he still drops down, has a sidearm delivery, doesn't throw 100 miles an hour, but really effective. And he'll be closing some, some games for the Mariners this year. Zizek hits the zone against Chris Keck. Keck last year, good numbers with Grand Junction. His first taste of pro ball. And that's going to be a tough play at third. And it's going to be an infield hit for Keck. Hey, get called up, get a hit. Zach Shank is now at third base. Well, and Zach had a tough last hop. Thought the ball was going to stay down, popped up, but he still made it. it was such a long throw from that angle. To, it's tough to get a lot on it. Here's Jimenez. Wilkins Jimenez. Hit for Jimenez. First and second. A couple of young kids getting uh, knocks against Steve Ciszek. And for Steve's sake, these are the tough ones. When you're when you're a closer, you have that closer mentality. You're coming in, you're trying to get your work in before you hop on the bus, and you're facing some young kids. The adrenaline rush isn't the same. Yep. Ryan Rayburn, probably the last veteran you'll see for the Rockies. At least from a position player standpoint, Rayburn moved up. He signed a minor league deal. Obviously, he's got a ton of big league time. He's a professional hitter. All right. And Ryan, who was announced last week, was added to the big league roster. He'll be the fourth outfielder for the Rockies. And we'll find out again after the game. Check Twitter. As to who the uh, you know 24th and 25th players will be for the Rockies, how the bullpen will shake out. And, you know, a guy like Brandon Barnes, who visited with us earlier, will the Rockies keep five outfielders? How are they going to at least uh, put their roster together for the first few days of the season? Right, is it going to be 13 position players and 12 pitchers, or vice versa? You have the four starters. How many guys in the bullpen are you going to keep? Is it going to be how many right-handers, how many left-handers? There's so much going on, even up to the last minutes. And the Rockies don't need a, a fifth starter for a while. And the good news, by the way, John Gray threw a 40-pitch bullpen in the last 48 hours and and everything went well yeah, so now I, they're going to now they're going to start to plot out exactly how he's going to work to get back to uh, the big leagues this ball's in the air to deep right center off the bat of Rayburn and it is off the right center field wall it's going to score at least one as Keck scores Jimenez had to wait to see if it was going to be caught out there by Daniel Robertson but that's got to be a good feeling because Ryan Rayburn drove this a long way and Rayburn had uh, scuffled his last couple of ball games at least in terms of results but man this thing was driven about 400 feet to right center field and then he did it right on right against a, a sidearm drop down type of closer and it's one of the things that Rayburn's a good guy and as we said pros pro last he, he was acquired to face left-handed pitching you see plenty of really good left-handers <laughs> in the NL West, but 
you know, he wanted to remind everybody, listen, I can hit righties also. And in the first game that he had over here in the Rockies uniform was against King Felix over in Peoria. Threw out a couple hits that day. Jensen Park, great story, product of Northern Colorado. He's in running for uh, Ryan Rayburn right now at second. And on the ground is short. Trying to get a run home. So it's eight to five. Here's Jensen Park. Jensen Park was a late round pick of the Rockies after a nice career at University of Northern Colorado. And all he did in Grand Junction, maybe every time we looked last <laughs> summer, he's throwing out three hits a game. Exactly. Well, it doesn't matter where you're drafted. It's just what you do after that. In fact, Jensen got moved late in the summer to Boise. He had 341 in Grand Junction. And in Boise did a nice job. 71 at bats. He had a solid 268. So overall a 314 minor league debut for the native of Hawaii. Not a big guy. 5'10", about 165 pounds. This is Daniel Suero at the plate. Two outs. Wilson Soriano coming up. Takes a strike. And from Boca Chica down in the Dominican Republic. That's where the Rockies that's, complex is. Yep, that's their uh, Dominican complex. Last year he was in Modesto. Wilson hit 266 in Modesto last year. Oh, well. Played primarily second base. goes down swinging in the inning the Rockies get a couple of runs on three knocks against Steve Ciszek eight to five as we go to the eighth Seattle in front
Training 2016. Drew Goodman, Jeff Houston, Ryan Spillboards. Mike Blowers is uh, headed to the clubhouse, get ready to get on the bus and to the airport to go to Arlington, Texas. Rockies make uh, another change on the hill. Gonzalez German will take over. Another guy in the mix, Huey, for yes. one of the final spots in the bullpen. Gonzalez, we've seen him a, a few times after being claimed off of waivers from the Cubs. Fastball changeup. This is Leon Landry at the plate. Outside. One and one on Landry. Some of the numbers on Jermaine this spring. The sparkling numbers. Yeah, real good, other than the, the whip because of the walks. walks. Not on there, but uh, much higher than you'd like. It's going to turn foul. But even when he has walked somebody, he's made the pitch then to get out of it, whether it was a double play, strikeout. Out Leon Landry, one gone. Bring up Efren Navarro. We talked about Tacoma earlier for the Mariners and then all the new staff here for Scott Service at the big league level. But in, in AAA for Tacoma, Pat Listash is the manager, Scott Brocious is the hitting coach, and Lance Painter is the pitching coach. Some familiar names. This is actually Arby Fields. He's going to get his first at bat. Arby, a switch hitting young outfielder, and he takes ball one. <laughs> Jeff Houston frantically whipping through the pages to find out a little bit more about Arby Fields. What do you got, Huey? Change ups low, two and one. Born in San Bernardino, signed as a minor league free agent a couple years ago. Went to Cypress Junior College. You know what? The Cypress Junior College, our very own Corey Sullivan. That's right. But that sounded familiar. Corey went from Cypress on to Wake Forest. Where is a two-way player there, outfielder and a pitcher. Arby pops out. Two gone. And that'll bring up Zach Shank. 28th round pick in 2013. 28th round pick. Yeah. Good. He's make you know, he's moving up, huh? That's right. Pennsylvania kid. And split time last year between Jackson and Tacoma. The college sign. Where do you, where do you go? Paris. To Paris College. Paris College. In Marist. Ta oh, Marist. Yes. Back my way. That's right. Yeah. Poughkeepsie, New York. I'm sure, he's happy to get out of the Southern League in those bus rides. You played the oh, Southern yes, League. Oh yes, I did. Those are some of the long ones. There's some in the Texas League, too. They'll make you move up. <laughs> I got a buddy who, in independent ball, he was playing for Grand Prairie. In in Texas. Texas. Yeah, in Texas. And um, it's about, Bo was it about, not about, no, it um, was um, Pete Incavillia. Pete, yeah, Inky. Pete Incavillia, big slugger, right? He was his manager. Edmonton was in their league. Edmonton? Edmonton. They had they had the fanciest bus going though. They had the sleeper bus because they they literally had 24 plus hour bus rides. Oh. Grand Prairie <laughs> up to Edmonton. Edmonton. Now Steve Balboni's in the game though. He's he's a scout. I don't remember which 
club he is, but you see him uh, every once in a while throughout the course of a season. But he's, he's scouting. Bye-bye. Steve, bye-bye, Balboni. And Shank takes outside. Two and two. Eighth inning for Seattle. The Mariners up eight to five. By the way, this is very important. Well, Spilly's listening to. I'm gonna wake him up. Who do you guys have tonight? We'll get back to that next half inning. Think about that. Let me know who you have tonight in the semis. 8 5, Mariners, middle of 8. five as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning with Jeff Houston, Cody Houston, <laughs> and Ryan Spielborg's on Drew Goodman. Got to put Cody on camera here. Wow. Your youngest uh, child. And that, see that stadium right there in the middle? Do you see it looks like an airplane hangar, Huey? That's where we're going to be on Monday night. Right, with the roof open. With the, Already, yeah. Is it going to be open? It's going to be open game. for the game. Wow. I already got confirmation of that. You know who's throwing out the first pitch for Arizona? Larry Fitzgerald. Larry, Fitz you did that. Give I've me some, a homework, baby. Okay. Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, Mike Montgomery. And his fastball's down low. Ball one. Larry Fitzgerald may be, along with Goldie, the most popular athletes in the desert. This could be a tough play. Good stands and no play. And you know what? That's uh, that's fields out left field. I don't think I don't think Arby can see the baseball. No, well, what the sun angle the way it is now is just pointing, saying I'm I'm gonna need some help maybe. Need the high sky, no clouds, nothing to. It's like driving. It's like driving. Uh, to the west on the 101 around six o'clock. Right. You're going but up to just, Peoria last night. It, right in your right eyes. Right in your eyes. Yeah, for about 15 miles. Good breaking ball. Ryan Stevens walked and scored in the sixth. This is his second at bat. Two and two. Well, for Mike this spring and eight games one and oh with a one eight six era wow good pitch so my boy when he took over that place that it's a ground ball to second final spring training crowd at beautiful That's salt that. river fields a talking stick more than eight thousand today it is i say this all the time Huey, my favorite time of year and what a beautiful facility and every year this facility garners award after award for you know, best spring training site, best hospitality, et cetera, et cetera. Home of the Rockies and the Arizona Diamondbacks. 
Scott Burcham takes inside. Single for Burcham in the sixth. You know, the thing I like about coming to the Valley is, you know, uh, depending on where for, for Seattle, it's not that far to get down here. For people in Colorado, it's not. So you, you can come down and enjoy the weather, catch some baseball games, see your favorite players. Hey, by the way, our general manager at Ruth Sports in the Rocky Mountain region, David Woodman, he and his family were making their way to the Grand Canyon, and uh, they stopped off in a picturesque town just north of here. Maybe you're familiar with it? Sedona, Sedona? Arizona. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I told them to look for your statue. Did they find it? Um, <laughs> Disappointingly, <laughs> they nope. did not. Okay. And I guess they didn't know where to look. Yeah, right. That's the key. One out. Birch There's Mon. Sedona. Looks like Bell Rock in the background. Notice how the it looks like a bell. Looks like a bell. That's why it's hence the name. Nice. <laughs> you guys are very creative up there. <laughs> They were feeding you that information in your ear, no, weren't they? They were not. Stuff you learn in history class, I think it was. Or so civics, or I don't know. One of those one classes. Of those classes. <laughs> Probably not calculus, no. though. Cole Anderson. <laughs> does it feel like the eighth inning of the final yes, spring training does. game now? Yes. Yes, it does. Shallow right. <laughs> That's a nice catch yeah, out there catch. by Alex Jackson. Alex pulling off the second baseman and then not having the collision. He's had a couple of tough chances. He has, and he's made them look pretty easy. Slides to eliminate and avoid the contact. Those teal uniforms are still my, one of my favorites. I, I, I would agree with you. Jackson's a big kid. He's from Escondido, 6'2", 215-pounder. We mentioned he was their first pick in the 2014 draft. Sixth pick overall. Good breaking oh. ball. He's a Mariner's top prospect. Here's the 0-2. Chris Keck, an infield single, up the third base line. I love the teams do this. Give some of their minor leaguers an opportunity to play in a big league spring training game, kind of rewarding them for their work during spring training. Zach Wilson, the farm director. We'll hear early in the morning from typically Tommy Ronalds, the bench coach, say, hey, we're going to need, you know, a couple extra outfielders. We're going to need a couple middle infielders. And then Zach Wilson will, you know, pick and choose from there. There was a walk and a man left as we move on to the ninth inning. The Mariners up 8-5 to five in the desert.
Battle leading, top of the ninth inning. Tyler Smith's going to lead things off. Rockies have Chad Qualls on the mound. One of uh, their pickups in the offseason, the veteran sinker balling right hander. And he'll uh, add to the five and a third that he's already thrown so far this spring. Well, and a veteran guy that uh, has been in this league in division before, pitching for the Padres, Arizona. The so he's not intimidated by anything. He's probably seen it all. Yeah, originally a second round pick of Houston back in 2000. He's got 11 years and 58 days, Huey, of service time. And you know each and every day you get too. You're wondering why, what do days matter? They do, towards your pension. Yeah. After 10, it doesn't matter as much, but getting to that point. The Rockies, his ninth major league team. Show you what kind of memory I have. You got 10 years and a weekend. All right. You are correct. Right 10 money. years and seven days. Nice job, partner. Well, I ought to get some of the pension for doing <laughs> that. You get in line. <laughs> <laughs> Ball's lifted to the center field. Nice job out there by Daniel Suaro. Smith is retired, one out. Let's take a look at the uh, probables that first three against Arizona. Jorge De La Rosa on Monday night against Zach Granke, the new acquisition, of course, of the Diamondbacks. Chad Bettis on Tuesday against another new acquisition for the Diamondbacks. Shelby Miller came over from Atlanta after one year there, the former Cardinal. Tyler Chatwood on Wednesday against the left-hander Patrick Corbin, an all-star back in 2013. That's a formidable threesome now for Arizona. Well, and that's why a lot of people have picked Arizona to do well in the division this year. You know, for Jorge De La Rosa, it'll be a second opening day start. Two years ago, he had the opening day nod down in Miami okay. in 2014. And how about Tyler Chatwood? You know, after missing Almost two years, a year and three quarters. Yep. To be in the top three in the rotation. On the ground is short. Soriano will throw out Jackson. And the Mariners in Arlington, Texas, they will have King Felix, nat Felix naturally on Monday against left-hander Cole Hamels. Isashi Iwakuma on Tuesday against Martin Perez and then Wade Miley, another new acquisition for Seattle, veteran left-hander will go against Colby Lewis of the Rangers. How many guys going to be rushing to the bat rack on Monday to no. face either Hernandez or Cole Hamels? We saw Iwakuma throwing today out in the bullpen, just getting some, some work in. Jake McGee coming in. Yeah, Rockies want to make sure they get a little bit of work for both Qualls and McGee. Jake McGee is going to get a little work. He's going to face a young man by the name of D.J. Peterson. Two outs, nobody on. It's been a real solid spring. First 
in the Cactus League for Jake McGee. Came over from Tampa. DJ Peterson, man, this is a, this is a local game for him. He's from down south in Gilbert. 33rd round pick. Yep, he wasn't over in Peoria. He'd just drive up the 101. Short little jaunt from Gilbert here to Scottsdale. He went to a good uh, baseball program, but out of state. Six hours away in Albuquerque. Went to the University of New Mexico. Coach Birmingham, Ray Birmingham's got a good program there. Yes, he does. Our old friend Jordan, Jordan Pacheco, Pacheco. A product of the Lobos. With Austin House, who pitched last night from New Mexico. Yeah. Two one outside uh, well on the outside corner. Two and two. That might have been a spring training strike. May have been a ninth inning <laughs> spring training. <laughs> Last strike game of spring in, training in game number thirty three of spring training. And a fly ball to really deep center field. And the catch is made again by Suara. So we'll go to the bottom of the ninth. The Mariners up eight to five. Can't come to the ballpark without a group photo. Nobody will believe you were here. Three more outs left at spring training. Even if the Rockies score three, I'm on the record of saying that Walt Weiss, as he did last night, will look over at Scott Servers <laughs> and say, Good say, luck. Adios. That's, That's right. Yeah. Well, the Rockies have four ties this spring, and the Mariners have three. Nick Vincent, who was just picked up recently by Seattle, a former Padre is going to throw the ninth inning and he'll be part of that bullpen come Monday for Seattle big pickup I've always liked this guy the way he's pitched uh, when he was with the Padres and he should help out the Mariners gotta love spring training you gotta love the final day of spring training I'm looking here at the Mariners have used three different left fielders three different center fielders two different right fielders three third basemen two <laughs> second basemen two short stops two first basemen hard on the ground the third good pick up by shank and off the bag so wilkins jimenez reaches on that throwing error come on get that did the tough part on oh, that ground ball on the hop. He came up, but then pulled the throw across his body and pulled the first baseman off the bag. So Jensen Park, who we were bragging on earlier, we saw him pinch running for Rayburn. Wait, get his first 
at bat. How many coaches walk by Jensen Park and say, hey, Gede, Gede a couple meals today already? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Well, but he knows how to hit. Yes, he does. He had 341 last year in Grand Junction. Oh. Hi, and he moved up to the older short season team, Boise. He hit there also. Park a 32nd round pick last summer. Made the midseason All Star game in the Pioneer League. And strike three on Jensen. So Nick Vincent strikes him out. One gone. Now to bring up Zach Osborne. Well, my friend. I'm really looking forward to Monday night. I, I am too. You know, I, everybody, I think, is. You know, fans, players, coaches, front office. First day of school, Christmas. It's your birthday all wrapped into one. Yes, it is. Two out. That'll bring up Daniel Suero. Two outs and Jimenez at first base. I think that no matter how many opening days you've had, this will be my 31st in pro ball. It still holds the same allure as the first one. Yeah. It is a de facto national holiday. Full down the right field line and into the Rockies bullpen, which is now vacant. <laughs> it's a ghost town no. down there. Well, if you look down into the benches, too, from our vantage point there, I could see two Mariner players, and there's nobody. Or maybe there might be a couple that just snuck up in the Rockies dugout. They're all sitting back out of the shade. They'll be sitting out on the, the steps. One ball, one strike. I always find it appropriate to mention the home plate umpire in the uh, with two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning. We failed to do that earlier. I failed to do that. Ryan Goodman. My Any older, relation? My, my older brother. We get a good shot of Ryan to show that probably <laughs> impossible that he's my older brother. Yeah, First, the height, the so. height the probably height, gives it away, doesn't the height? it? height? Definitely. Swung on and missed, and that'll do it for spring training 2016 as Nick Vincent strikes out Swearer to end it. The Mariners will win the baseball game 8-5 to five for those who care. Seattle finishes 16-14-3. In the Cactus League, the Rockies 15-13-4. and four. A successful spring training for both of these organizations, and we wish naturally both of them Great success in 2016. Partner, I'm going to see you here in down about 10 road. minutes walking uh, <laughs> right down Lincoln. For Mike Flowers, Jeff Hewson, Brian Spielborgs, and our entire crew, Drew Goodman saying so long from Scottsdale. We'll talk to you Monday after the break. We'll get you to your respective studios.